Hello everyone and welcome to the next lesson on Rutherford scattering. We'll start off with a quick quiz, so if you pause the video and have a go at these, the answers will be on the next slide. Check your answers. If they're right, give it a tick. If it's wrong, add in the correct answer next to your answer. This lesson is on Rutherford scattering also called the alpha particle scattering experiment. Um, it's exactly the same as the experiment you looked at in chemistry last year, and it's all about how we know what the atom looks like. So we're gonna start off by looking what the what they used to think the atom looked like, the experiments that they did, and then the new model of the, the atom um, we're gonna look at. On the screen now is a table with all the information we looked at last lesson. What I'd like you to do is pause the video, try and write down all of the information you can remember. The answers are on the next slide, so when you play the video you can see what you got right and um, what you need to correct. So pause the video and have a go at filling in this table now. The answers are on the screen, so if you want to check your answers and correct anything you didn't quite get right, there's quite a lot of information there, um, but it's really important you need to uh, you will need this for the future lessons. So making sure you've got everything right now will help you a lot in the future. So on the screen now is the model of the atom that we use today. However, it didn't always used to look like this. So we've got the nucleus in the middle with the protons and the neutrons. We've got the electrons going around the outside. It's not always been like this. Before, before they knew it looked like this, they used to think of a whole different model of the atom, what it looked like. Um, so what we're going to do is start off by looking at what they used to think it looked like. And they changed their mind after they did an experiment and realized it couldn't be that. Um, and eventually, eventually, after a long time, they ended up with this model that we use today. Now, it's quite interesting because uh, no one's actually seen an atom. Atoms are way too small to see, even with a microscope. So we can't actually see them. They don't actually look like this. But what we'll do with this lesson is show you how we know it looks like this, even though we haven't seen it. Um, so it's quite an interesting lesson on how, how science works, really. This is a model that they used to think the atom looked like. So that picture on the left is what they used to think the atom looked like, probably going back over 100 years now. Um, it's called the plum pudding model. So the one we use today is called the nuclear model because the nuclear model has the nucleus. Now look at this one, it doesn't have a nucleus. It's just a big ball of pink charge. That's positive. You can see the positive in the background. And it's got these yellow negative dots in it. That's what they thought. So they thought it was neutral. So it's got the positive and the negative, the positive pink charge and the negative electrons. So it was neutral. That's what they did think. But they didn't think about nucleus and they didn't think it had um, shells around the outside. Now, it's called the plum pudding model because they thought it looked just like a plum pudding. If you look on the right, that is a plum pudding. It looks a bit like a Christmas pudding. And there's two parts to that. It's got the cakey bit. And it's got the fruit dotted around inside. That's exactly what they thought. They thought the cakey bit was the um, the positive charge. So it just had this charge in this ball. And dotted within it, the fruit dotted around inside, were the negative electrons um, dotted around the cake. And that's why it's called the plum pudding model. And it's a really famous model. Um, it's what they thought this solid um, atom looked like. Um, and then later on, they did an experiment and realized that it couldn't look like this. So they weren't wrong to think this at the time, because that's what they thought based on um, some of the information they had. Um, and the way science works is once you do an experiment and say, oh, it definitely couldn't look like this, then you can change your model and it adapts very slightly. So before I teach you the experiment that they did on the atom, I'd like to teach you um, about a made up experiment based on, on um, just some made up stuff that how we can know what something looks like without seeing it. 
I want you to imagine that there's a box and in the box is a piece of fruit. Now I can't see in that box, but I am allowed to fire little ball bearings out of a gun through the box and it hits the target. Every time the ball bearing hits the target on the other side, it might make a little dot, like a little mark where the bullet hits the target. Now if I move my gun about and I fire absolutely loads of ball bearings, then every single ball bearing will hit that target. And this is the pattern it makes. Imagine this is the pattern it makes. So every black dot on that screen, on that lower picture, every black dot is a bullet that hits. Now you can see from the middle, that middle circle, there are no bullets passing through the middle. Now what can you tell me about that? What does that mean? If no bullets pass through the middle of that piece of fruit, but the bullets seem to pass through all around it, what does that mean? Well, more than likely, it means that there's a solid stone in the middle of that piece of fruit. So without seeing the fruit, even though I can't see it, it's in a box, by doing an experiment, I can work out that it's probably a plum or a peach, maybe a mango, but I know it's not a banana because those bullets can pass through the banana and I know it's not a banana. So immediately I know, I know what it does not look like and I'm starting to know that it has a stone. So straight away, it was actually a peach because it's got that solid stone in the middle, but straight away, I'm able to see some features of this fruit just by firing stuff at it. Now we're gonna do something very, very similar, but we're obviously not gonna use fruit and a gun. We're gonna use some, some, different, um, some different apparatus. Um, we're gonna talk about that on the next slide. But it's the same idea. When I said earlier, we've never seen an atom. It's true, we haven't, but what we can do is loads of experiments to find out what it does look like, some features of that atom without actually seeing it itself. It's so small you can't see it, but we do know um, some things about it based on what experiments we've done. And we're gonna learn about that experiment now. Here is a picture of the equipment that he used for the alpha particle scattering experiment. So we use alpha particles for this. So we call it the alpha particle, but it also could be called the Rutherford scattering experiment. They're both the same, the same experiment. Now, the first thing I want you to have a look at is that green screen going around the outside. That's called a fluorescent screen. Now, every time an alpha particle hits that, it flashes. That's the first bit of equipment. The second bit of equipment is your radiation source in the bottom left. Now that gives off alpha particles, which we know is a helium nucleus made of two protons and two neutrons. You fire those and every time the alpha particle hits the green screen, it will flash. Now in the middle of that, you can see the beam of alpha particles, like loads of bullets, that red beam coming out of it. And in between that, you place a thin piece of gold foil. So we've got some thin gold foil. We've got a fluorescent screen. We've got a radiation source that fires alpha particles. And that's it. There's nothing else to this experiment, but it does have some really interesting results. So if you want to, you can pause the video. Try and note down what these pieces of equipment are, because you need to know what is what it was, what it's made of. Um, and then try and just check yourself if you want to. We have some quick check questions on the screen. Um, I'd like you to pause the video, write down what you think the answers are for these, and I'll display the answers on the screen on the next slide. And pause the video again and check your answers. If you got it right, give it a tick. And if you didn't get it right, you can add in anything that you missed. The next thing we're going to look at is what actually happened. So we know we've got a stream of alpha particles, a bit like bullets, flying at some gold foil. They're going to go through and eventually hit a screen around the edge. 
I'm now going to zoom in and look carefully at the thin gold foil and you can see those particles in the middle they are your gold atoms. Now there are three results which happened which you need to know about. When you fired these bullets the first one I'm going to talk about is uh, the blue one on the right that's the first result we need to know. Most alpha particles went straight through and they went straight through and we could see them hitting the screen on the other side. So that's the first result. Most alpha particles went straight through and hit the screen straight on the other side. The second result is the one on the red at the top. Some deflected. Now deflected, you can see the very top um, alpha particle deflecting. It gets close to the nucleus and then kind of steers off course. It's, it, it kind of bends. It gets close to the nucleus and then bends away. So deflected means to change direction. So only some deflected. Most went straight through and some deflected. The last result is at the bottom in purple. Few of them deflected backwards. If you have a look at the diagram, you can actually see all three. You can see that most went straight through. You can see some deflecting and there's actually one that's deflecting backwards. Now, those are the results. These are facts that happened. We know they happened. They were observed and he wrote them down. So the first thing we need to know is what actually happened. And these three things happened. And the next slide, we're going to look at what that tells us. So these three results, you don't need to write these down at the moment, but these are the three results you need to know. And this is what actually happened in the experiment once you fired the alpha particles at the gold foil. The next thing we're going to look at is what conclusions can we draw from this? So the three results are on the board. These are what actually happened. So a result is a thing that actually happened. And the conclusion is what you can tell from that result. For example, if someone comes in the room and they got wet hair, that's a result. It's a fact. They've got wet hair. The conclusion I can draw is probably it's raining outside. So it's what can I tell from the result? So the first one, the first result is that most alpha particles went straight through. What can I tell from that? Well, if I'm firing these bullets, these alpha particles at the, at the foil and most of them go straight through, the first thing I can tell is the atom is mostly empty space. And we knew that from last lesson. We've, we've known that about our current nuclear model. We even said last lesson that the gap between the nucleus, uh, the nucleus is 10,000 times smaller than the atom. And that gap between the nucleus and the shells is huge. It's completely empty space there. Which is weird, but that's what we can conclude from this result. Uh, and that's why we have the, the current model that looks like that. The second result is that some deflected, some alpha particles deflected. They changed direction, they bent. Why is that? What can we conclude from that? Well, we know that the alpha particle has a positive charge. It's got a charge of plus two. It's made of two protons and two neutrons. It's got a charge of plus two. So we know that when that positive alpha particle comes close to the nucleus, the nucleus must also be positive and it repels the positive alpha particles and that's what makes them deflect. So really, they don't actually hit the nucleus. They come really close. They feel that positive charge of the nucleus and then they repel. So now we know that all of those protons are in the nucleus and that nucleus is actually positive. And that's how we know it from this result from this experiment. So some deflected, some alpha particles deflected. So therefore the nucleus is positive and repelled by the positive alpha particles. 
The last result is that few deflected backwards. Now this conclusion that we can draw is that the nucleus is very small and very dense. We said last time the nucleus is 10,000 times smaller than the atom. That's because only few came backwards, deflected backwards. And it's very dense because they came in, whacked into the nucleus and then came back the other way. They deflected back again. And that means it's very, very dense. Lots and lots of mass is concentrated in the nucleus. And that's what we think today. If you think about our nucleus, the protons and the neutrons have loads of mass compared to the electrons. And they're all concentrated in the middle. That's where all the mass is. The electrons have hardly any mass and they fly around the outside. And there's loads of empty space around the outside. So all of the mass is concentrated in the middle, which makes the nucleus very, very dense. What I'd like you to do now is pause the video, try and remember the three results and the three conclusions. Don't need to write anything down, you just need to think. And then I'll put the answers up in a few seconds. So the first result is that most alpha particles went straight through. The conclusion, uh, sorry, the second one was that some deflected. The third one was that few deflected backwards. The conclusions were, for the first one, the atom is mostly empty space. The nucleus is positive and the nucleus is very small and very dense. I'd like you to pause the video now and try and write down the answers to the following questions. You can then check your answers on the next slide. The answers are on the board. So pause the video. If you got it right, give it a tick. If uh, you didn't get it right, just write in the correct answer next to your um, next to your answer. And that's the end of the lesson. So we started off by doing a recap from last lesson. We looked at what the model of the atom that they used to think it looked like, the plum pudding model. We looked at the equipment they used for the alpha particle scattering experiment. What they did, the results and the conclusions for that experiment. And that is how we changed our opinion of what the atom actually looked like by looking at the results, making conclusions and changing what we thought about the model. So if you weren't happy with any part of that, you can go back and rewatch that part of the video.